This is a VR to Little Cosmic Crows Get to Know Your Witches Tag. Um, I first heard about it from Island Alien and the Beanbag Hagwag. So let's get started. Number one, does your sun sign, zodiac sign, portray you correctly? If not, do your other planetary signs? Well, I am on the Taurus side of the Aries Taurus cusp. They call it the cusp of power. And I am a true blue bull, but I do have some fiery tendencies. So uh, I do think they represent me well because I am your standard bull. If you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to turn around, dig my heels in and do it just to say, hey, you're wrong. Okay, number two, what songs bring you the most magical vibes? Um, that's an easy one. I have to say, if you haven't already, go look up S.J. Tucker and listen. She has magic in her voice and magic in her in her music and there it, it's a spiritual experience all in itself so that would be my top favorite okay um number three which one of your deities guides ancestors is most sarcastic with you if this doesn't apply to you which of your tarot oracle decks is um well it's not a deity or a guide or an ancestor but it's actually the universe they really get me going that's where the sarcasm lies for me uh yeah okay um number four biggest witchy mess up or misinterpretation so i recently made calendula salve and uh when i read it i read that you could use uh coconut oil and I did, but I used it as the carrier oil. And so when you use carrier oil and you cook it with calendula, it really stinks. And it didn't work. So I ended up having to run it down the sink and do version two. And version two, I used grapeseed oil. And then um, actually it ended up being 2.5 because I had to remelt it and add more beeswax and more essential oil. But that's the biggest one. Uh, number five, would you write a book on your craft spirituality? Why? If you have already, what were your challenges in doing so? I haven't. I'm a fiction writer, but there is a book in me. And it's a big trendy thing right now. I'm watching. There are only one or two books about it. So I'm hopeful that I can take it in my own direction and it'll go places. So I'll keep you updated on that. Six, if someone wanted to summon you to their circle, what five items would they need? Okay, this is funny. I thought about this one long and hard. They need a good piece of labdor <laughs> lab Labradorite, rosemary, lavender, coffee, and last but not least, a representative representation of a unicorn. Okay, number seven, if you were a ghost, what place would you haunt? Well, as I, in particular, when I die, want to be put into a pod and planted as a tree, I would love to haunt a forest. So I'm hoping that they'll find a nice spot to plant me so I can grow and have fun there. Okay. Eight. What is the funniest way someone has reacted to finding out you are a witch? I haven't come out and said, oh, I'm a witch. So that hasn't really been a thing yet. I've just kind of stepped out of the closet. I use the term, and I give tons of witchy advice, but I don't run around telling you, hey, you, I'm a witch. Hey, you, I'm a witch. So, can you imagine if somebody did that? That's actually really funny, but I haven't had that experience yet. So, I didn't actually, like, come out and announce it. I just kind of stepped out of the closet and started doing and just let the world assume whatever it wants, and nobody's even really asked. So, okay. Um, number nine, do you have any superstitions? Yes. Um, spilled salt, left o thrown over the left shoulder, and I don't even know where I picked that up. That, and I won't walk under ladders. Um, and I also, like, if I say something and you know how, and I knew this, see, without ever knowing, you know how the universe works. If you say it, it's going to happen. So I learned early on, knock on wood, so that if I said it, it wouldn't happen. Um, the one that I don't believe in and I think is a problematic is the black cats because I love all cats and I stop and pet them, especially the black ones because they don't get enough love. Um, okay, number 10. If you could possess any fantasy magic, what would your power be? That's easy. I thought long and hard about this because I love Harry Potter. Uh, 
I have this little bit of a voyeur in me. And so I would really enjoy his uh, cape of invisibility so that we could sneak around and see things we're probably not supposed to see. Okay. 11. What is something random on your altar? Okay. That's easy too because it's actually in the intro. If you go back and watch, you'll see it. Um, in the last year, year and a half, I've really leaned into this divine feminine side of things. And in studying it, um, I came to the maiden, which in the book I was reading, it was, she actually was called the creatrix. So I found one of my little figurines from Sailor Moon, and that is on my altar. Uh, the funny part is it's a little plastic thing, but it doesn't stand really well, so it tends to fall over. So she's kind of leaned over there, but you can see it. Um, okay, so number 12. If one of the YouTubers you watched was a genie and they could grant you three wishes within their power, what would it be and what wishes? Can't be for more wishes. Okay, so I thought a lot about this too. Um, it's due, I picked her due to her magical vibe and the way she's so creative. I think Molly Roberts of In Her Sight would be the perfect genie. And um, <laughs> yeah, I the three wishes I would wish for would be unlimited... Um, creative idea so I didn't have to think of my own plots anymore uh maybe to go back with all the um info I now have and start over and the third one would be because I really like the question would be to be the expert in the um oracle cards so there's that uh yeah oh I did it too soon okay 13 if you could instantly become an expert in any part of your craft spirituality what would it be okay so there's lots of tarot readers, there's lots of ex experts and lots of books about tarot, but not so much oracle cards. So if I could, I would have the genie make me an expert in oracle cards because I think that's an un untapped reservoir. And then, or <laughs> reservoir, resource. <laughs> okay, 15, where do you, oh no, 14. When you die, what do you think will happen to you, your soul? Okay. Due to my own experience, I know that I've lived several lifetimes. I've been back along the hallway and I've seen glimpses in the doorways. I've only actually seen one or two of my past life bits. But I think we're all on a journey and we all have lessons. And as we move through each lifetime, you know, in a body, we get new lessons and, and we grow. And then we come back and we get more lessons and we grow. So I know this isn't my last lifetime. So I've got at least a few more. So that would be where I would think I will end up. Uh, and then last is 15. Where do you see yourself spiritually in the next five years? Uh, I hope to know more, but my main hope is that I love it and enjoy it. And I'm as creative as I am now because that's, there's just, a, that's the magic all in of itself is the, the way it's changed my perspective and the way I see the world and the magic in it. As long as I can see that and enjoy that, that's all that matters. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked it, you can subscribe to me. And if not, that's okay too. Uh, thanks and bright blessings.